Okay, let's talk about the ILTS, and specifically we're talking about the Illinois Elementary Education Test. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you are preparing for this particular um, exam. And a little bit about myself, uh, my name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math, uh, taught middle and high school mathematics. So I definitely know what it's like to teach in a classroom, take certification exams. And this one in particular, um, this don't let the name deceive you, just because this is an elementary level uh, exam, at least a certification, the math that you're going to uh, need to know to do well in the ILTS uh, uh, elementary education test grades 1 through 6 is pretty considerable. I would kind of classify it as kind of like advanced level high school mathematics. So if you weren't aware of that, I would definitely uh, urge you to take a look at the specific um, uh, elements of what's going to be on an exam, at least with respect to math. So what I got here for you is a kind of a quick math pop quiz, if you will, something that you definitely shouldn't be able to know how to do. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and give you a chance to solve this particular problem, and then, of course, I'll talk about it. But before we get going, I want to let you know that if you kind of come to find they like my teaching style, I actually offer a full, complete, comprehensive uh, math prep course for the ILTS. I'm going to leave a link to that course in the description of this video. So that's something you can check out if you're interested. But with that being said, let's take a look at this problem here. So I'm going to give you the problem, then I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue, and then of course I'm going to solve it and we'll discuss it. Okay, so this is something for sure that you would want, uh, should be able to handle to do well on the ILTS uh, elementary uh, education exam. So here's an equation I'd like you to solve for x. Okay, so this is, this is the question. Okay, so solve for x. And I'll leave it at that for now. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video and give it a whirl, I'm going to give you a clue here in a second. Okay, if you if you want that clue, you know, go ahead and continue to watch. If you don't want that clue, I'll pause the video and go ahead and try the prompt. Okay, so here comes the clue. All right. So what we're looking at here is a polynomial. All right. So this is a polynomial. It's a degree four polynomial, okay, fourth degree polynomial. So how do we solve a fourth degree polynomial equation? What are some uh, techniques? I'd like you to think about factoring, okay? So this is kind of uh, your kind of clues here, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a step so we can kind of start this problem. And then if you, anytime you feel like you can kind of like take the problem, like, okay, I've seen enough and you can solve, you know, basically solve the rest of it without seeing me do it, I would encourage you to, you know, try to do that. Um, it's just good practice uh, to see if you can handle the steps on your own. Okay, so here we go. So the, what we want to do here, okay, is set this equation equal to zero. Okay, so this would be x to the fourth minus 16 is equal to zero. Okay, so I just moved the 16 over here. And now I want you to notice that we can factor this polynomial here. And I want you to think of a squared minus b squared, the difference of two squares. And that is equal to a plus b times a minus b. Okay, so this is a kind of a factoring problem right here. Now, Again, I think this is another clue. If you kind of like to see where this problem is going, I would again encourage you to pause the video and, and go ahead and take a step. If you're not quite sure, let's go ahead and apply the difference of two squares to what's going on here. Okay, so x to the fourth, I can write as x squared squared. Okay, so x squared squared is x to the fourth minus 16 is the same thing as four squared right? And that's equal to zero. Now, polynomials, solving polynomials, and factoring, this is huge topics in, in algebra. So I can't, you know, go ahead and this is not going to turn into a complete full lesson on this, but again, I'm going to be making some commentary uh, on this. So hopefully these are skills that you have. If you don't have these skills, these are skills that you're definitely going to need to do well in the ILTS. Okay. So at this point, I want you to notice that this is like my A squared, and this is like my b squared, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the formula for the difference of two squares here. So this is going to give me x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 4 
and that's going to be equal to zero. Now, let's just make sure that this is a correct application of the difference of two squares. If I multiply this back, we'll use the FOIL method. So x squared times x squared is going to give me x to the fourth. Minus four, minus four times x squared is minus 4x. Okay, x squared times this positive 4 is plus 4x. Whoops, x squared. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead and correct that. Minus 4x squared. x squared times 4 is going to be 4x squared, and then negative 4 times this positive 4 is going to be minus 16 is equal to 0. So this goes away, right? So I'm back to where it was at. x to the fourth minus 16 is equal to 0. So in fact, this is the correct factorization for what we started off here, okay? So just kind of verifying that for you real quick, okay? Okay, so at this point, how can we how can we solve the rest of this equation using these two things? Well, what we have is um, something we call the zero product property. We have something here, okay, this quantity, okay, anything in parentheses is a quantity. This quantity being multiplied by this quantity, so I have two things being multiplied together and the answer is zero. So if I said to you, hey, I have two things, and when I multiply these two things together, the answer is zero, you would tell me, oh, well, you must be multiplying something by zero or the numbers, both of the numbers are zero. So yes, one of these or both of these have to be zero because if I multiply something times something else and the answer is zero, one or both are actually zero. So this is called the zero product property. So th what that allows us to do is to set both of these equal to zero, x squared minus four is equal to zero. And then over here, x squared uh, plus four is equal to zero. Now I have two simple quadratic equations. See here, this isn't a quadratic equation. I could have probably could have took a different strategy, but I wanted to go down this, this path of factorization to uh, solve this particular problem. Okay, so at this point, I can go ahead and move this four over to this side. So I got x squared is equal to four. So how do I solve this equation? Well, I have to take the square root of both sides and I get x is equal to plus and minus two. Remember the square root of a positive four is just not two, it's also negative two, okay? So the square root of four, we would write as plus and minus two. Now, how about this equation over here? If I go x squared is equal to negative four, well, I'm gonna run into a problem here in terms of real numbers. So when I take the square root of both sides, I'm gonna get x is equal to plus or minus two i. This is an imaginary number. Now, we're kinda of getting into some pretty advanced math here. I have an imaginary number. I have plus and minus two i. This is actually two solutions here. Let me go and write, these, write this out a little bit better for you. So this is x is equal to positive 2i and a negative 2i, okay? These are two solutions, one and two. And over here I have x is equal to a positive two and a negative two. So in total, I have four solutions to this polynomial. And that's something that you should have uh, kind of known from the get-go because I'm, when I'm dealing with the, anytime you're dealing with a polynomial, the degree of the polynomial, how many, uh, the degree is the highest power of that polynomial. That tells you how many solutions there are. Now that could be a combination of both real and or complex or imaginary numbers. So in this case, we ended up with two real number solutions and two imaginary number solutions for a total of four solutions, which uh, we kind of already knew going into this particular problem. So again, I can kind of take this you know, I would say somewhat simple problem. And we can really, you know, be discussing many big topics in kind of algebra and more advanced algebra. And this, you know, is just only a segment of the things that you're going to have to know for the ILTS. Again, uh, for the elementary education test, you're, you're going to have to know pretty decent amount of mathematics. I guess the way to look at it is, is hey, if this is the test you have to take and you have to know a lot of math, then embrace that and, you know, learn learn that math, you know, but the only way to really master master that and be ready for this test is just get yourself in a state of immersion. Even if you're strong in math, 
uh, you know, and you did well in your past classes, you're going to have to do a lot of review because there's a lot of different areas of mathematics you're going to be tested upon. So again, even like myself, I have a degree in math and master's degree. When I go teach this stuff, I have to you know, have it fresh in my mind and review. So just don't rest uh, on your memory. Uh, if you're taking, if you've been away from math for any, you know, uh, period of time, more than let's say a month. So, anyways, um, let's go and wrap up this video. Again, if you're interested in checking out my ILTS Elementary Education Math Prep Course, I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video. I've been on YouTube for like 12 years or so. Uh, put a lot of effort over the years, just because I love to teach math. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of uh, videos on my YouTube channel. It could definitely help you out. So if you like my teaching style, hopefully you'll consider subscribing and check out my various playlists. Um, hey, if you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Um, are you like thinking that you you're definitely want to be an elementary teacher? Obviously, this is an elementary test. Are you coming from maybe a middle school? Uh, I know I started off in high school, and then I switched to middle school. Um, then went back to high school. So... You know, just because you're at the elementary level doesn't mean that one day maybe you, you want to, you know, move on to middle school. But I can tell you right now, being a teacher uh, definitely requires a massive amount of commitment, uh, far beyond education. You're definitely going to have to be a lifelong learner, you know, taking these exams is just part of it. Uh, but mastering your craft and just, you know, uh, getting in there um, and learning how to, you know, work with students, work with parents, work with the school. It's a, it's a, it's a challenging career. But the same token, if you're new to teaching, uh, you're definitely going to have your challenges, but you're going to have some amazing uh, rewards as well. And we definitely need great teachers in this country. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your education career. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.